Now macOS Sequoia was just released to the public and in this video I'm going to be talking about my top features that you can start using right away. Apple intelligence is still a few months away so once that's released then I'll be doing an updated video of how to use some of those Apple intelligence features on macOS Sequoia. But let's go ahead and start off and show you some of the really cool things that you can start doing with this right now. So the first thing is window tiling. Now I've been using third party apps to tile my windows so you can snap them to the left or to the right just to give you more space for productivity. This is now built in and it's taken a long time for this to be implemented. Windows have had this for many, many years and it's going to make a lot of those third party apps redundant. One of my favorite apps that I've used for this is called Better Touch Tool. So let's go ahead and showcase how this works now. So I've got a whole bunch of windows here. All you need to do is just drag them to the left and you'll see it creates a little tile as you would expect like that. And you can even do them in the top corners or the bottom corners. So it's very convenient however you want to position them. So if I drag that to the bottom and I can snap this to the top corner and there you have a lot of different placements for your windows. So more than anything, this is a very good convenience factor. You then don't need to use the green button on the top left of your windows to maximize them. You can just hover over them and you can select one of these positions as you can see listed here. And for me, it's taken a long time to get to this stage, but I'm glad it's finally here. I do want to give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Clean My Mac X. If you're a Mac user, then the one must have app that every Mac OS user needs to install is Clean My Mac X. It's a utility app that protects your Mac from malware and removes system junk with so much ease, all through one of the most user-friendly interfaces of any Mac OS app. Not only is it great at protecting my Mac and saving storage space, I also like the nice little features such as automatically prompting to empty your bin as soon as you delete large files, and also doing a deep uninstall of apps that you simply send to the bin through your applications folder. So if you're looking for the single best protection and junk removal app for Mac, then hit the link in the description to download this to your Mac. Next, this is a feature that's been around for a very long time as well, and that's having backgrounds in your video conferencing apps and also doing presenter previews so you can see what other people see when you share your screen as kind of like a preview. Now, I'm not sure why it's taken so long to do this, but nonetheless, I'm now going to show you how that looks. So I have here Zoom open, and you can do this with FaceTime, any other video conferencing app. If you go over to the top menu for your video controls, of course, you already had the options for portrait, studio light and reactions. You now have this new option called background. If I select this, you can change this to multiple different backgrounds. So a lot of them are here from Apple Park. As you can see, you've got a nice transition and they work very well, actually. They work much better than the zoom backgrounds. So that's quite nice to see. You can have more gradient backgrounds as kind of like just solids. You can just select that from here, but you can also upload your own images and much like Zoom, that works very well. So this is not anything new. This has been around for a while. However, I also wanted to show you around the presenter preview because I think this is quite nice. So if I share my screen to my audience, let's say I select one of these windows, I'll hit share. Now, if I go back into that menu, you can do presenter overlay. Currently this is off. I can switch this over to small or large. If I do small, this creates my face in a little circle just here on the screen, which you can now move around and people will see this whilst you're sharing. So if I go ahead and make this a little bit bigger, I can just add myself on the corner of the screen and it's a great way to see what other people are seeing. So rather than you just having a thumbnail, of yourself like this on the side, you can just see a little overlay. And if you wanted to do more of a full screen one, if you go back to presenter overlay, you can hit large and that adds you completely on top of the actual shared screen. So if I just make that full screen and now you can see, I can talk about everything that I'm sharing whilst I'm kind of like full front and center. And I can just move to the side, point to the back. You may have seen a lot of TikTok videos like this as well. 
So that's a very convenient way. And the reason this doesn't show me on my actual screen like that is because it takes up most of the screen. And this just gives you that presenter preview in that window. So you just drop that down and you can have a look here. And I just think that's quite a nice thing as well. So it's a new way to share your screen with your audience whenever you're taking meetings for work, for example. I just think that's a nice update. So next, this is one of the coolest things about this OS. It's called iPhone mirroring. So if, for example, you don't have your phone with you, it can be locked, it can be downstairs, it can be another room. Let's say you've forgotten it. I'm just gonna leave it there. It's gonna be locked so you can see it's not on. I can actually access everything on my phone directly on my Mac OS as if I'm actually using my phone. There's a new app that gets installed. It's called iPhone mirroring. If you open this up, you go through the setup process initially, which is very quick and easy to do. You just enter your passcode, etc. And here you go, you can see my iPhone. I can access everything. I can respond to my WhatsApp messages. I can just browse all of my files. Lots of things as if I'm natively using my iPhone. This is perfect when you don't have your phone with you. You just wanna go and access all of your information. And you can use swipe gestures with your trackpad. You can also use your keyboard and mouse. And if I just go, onto the Apple website, for example. And if you don't have a trackpad and you're using a mouse, the quickest way to get back to the home screen is to just click the white bar at the bottom and that will close the app and leave it in the background. So iPhone mirroring, a really cool option. And this is also actually going to be great for developers that want to test app development and want to see how it looks on their screen. So plenty of use cases for this. So make sure you try that out if you do update to this Mac OS. The next one is called Safari Video Viewer. Let's say, for example, you come across a video on a website, whether it's YouTube or it could be any other website that has a video embedded onto the page. And you also want to multitask and maybe do your work side by side, but still watch the video and you don't have enough space. Now, what Safari does is you can extract that video from any web page and just have it in its own separate window floating on your screen. So I've got this video here showcasing the highlights from the Apple event. As you can see, I'm just gonna play that now. Let's say I also want to read some blogs. All I need to do is just hit this icon in the address bar and then go to video viewer. You select this, it creates a little full screen view and gives you like a theater view here. What you can do is hit the right arrows just on the right hand side of the controls and then do picture in picture. Now what that does, that's just extracted the video which you can drag around your entire screen then you can minimize that window where you got that video from and then carry on doing your work in the background whilst that video is continuing playing just on the side however you want and you can also resize it. So that is a very convenient way just to take videos out of specific websites and just have it playing like it's something that you've downloaded yourself. So a video viewer is a very nice feature for Safari. And last but not least, number five is called hide distracting items. Again, this is another Safari update, which I think is really cool. Let's say you're browsing a website and there's a lot of distracting items. Maybe it could be a whole bunch of adverts or a bunch of modules that you just don't want to see there. You can just hide them very quickly and easily. Again, if you go and hit that icon in the address bar, you hit hide distracting items. And now you can select whichever module or area on the website you want to hide. So let's say I wanna get rid of this top advertisement module. I just click it and in a Thanos style, it disappears into dust and that module is no longer going to be visible on that page. Let's say I want to do that a little bit more. I can get rid of this one. There's a whole bunch of ads at the bottom. I'm gonna get rid of them. And for no reason, I'm just gonna remove the footer as well. So if all of these are distracting for you, you can do that. You hit done in the address bar and now you have a much cleaner page for how you want to visualize things on your screen. Now, if you refresh this page, those items will not come back. They will stay hidden. And if you want to bring them back, Safari does remember what you've hidden. You can see the number, I've got six of them hidden. I can just do show hidden items, hit show, and they will all come back. So that's a very convenient factor, especially when you browse a lot of websites that have a lot of junk on them that you just don't want to see, but you want to spend time on that website. So that's just a nice little feature 
to eliminate a lot of the items that are just distracting for you when you are browsing a lot of the websites on Safari. So that's it guys, that was my top five features of macOS Sequoia on the day of public release. Make sure to like this video if you found those useful and you are enjoying these features as well. But make sure to subscribe when they do release all of the Apple intelligence updates. I will make an updated video on this. So keep an eye out for that and I will see you all at the next one. Take care.